Activated Life Coaching, thank you so much for joining me. Now in today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at Saturn's movement into Capricorn. This is a really big transition and I believe it's going to color the collective consciousness and all of our activity in a very significant way over the next 2.5 years. And that significant way can be summed up in one word and that word is leadership. This is all about leadership and leadership is going to be examined and looked at and thoroughly tested by Saturn in all kinds of places. And we're going to explore that together over the next 2.5 years. It's very exciting. Uh, Saturn's going to make his move end of January, start of Feb. Might take a while for you to feel the energetic shift because it's Saturn. Some people are feeling the energetic shift early, uh, depending on where they are karmically, depending on how sensitive they are, how much spiritual work they've done. Some people will feel it later, right? And that also depends on where Saturn is in your chart, how Saturn operates for you. It's going to be different for everybody, right? But um, it's going to be fascinating. It's going to be a really, really interesting transit, I think. And I know that we've had a tough start to the year. Okay, I've been looking at this and Happy New Year, by the way. I know I didn't say Happy New Year in my last video because my last video was all about the Australian fires and I was very preoccupied with that. Uh, I was very preoccupied with the news. I was very preoccupied with studying why is this happening. And um, I could see a lot of planets in fire uh, and earth and there's Rahu in, in air, you know, the air element and there's not a lot of water. So it's a very serious time. It's really sad to see that other parts of the world are also experiencing fires. I read an article that South Korea is on fire. I was thoroughly shocked by that. Uh, and there's of course all sorts of chaos and news and things kicking off all over the world. I mean, I, I'm shocked, quite frankly, that it's been such a hectic start to the year. But in my January 2020 video, I did say that love and action are going to be two themes. This is something I'll be bringing up in my Saturn and Jupiter video, which is the video I'm going to launch next. I haven't written it yet, but I'm formulating the thoughts on that. So that's coming uh, because love and action were two key words that I picked out for the year 2020. And one of the things that I said in that video was that if people are hanging on to low vibrations or outmoded ways of doing things or old structures or all these kind of things but if you're hanging on to bad stuff then that's going to be I think I said something like ouch or expect a rough ride so we can kind of see already that certain parts of the world um, have been hanging on to some stuff that isn't good and um, that is that is definitely being purged right now that's coming to the fore that's that's coming up that's coming up for clearing so this is definitely a tough time i know i've had a couple of comments on uh, the youtube channel and in various places where people have said that hey you know i'm feeling really anxious what do i do about this yes i understand i completely relate to the fact that you might be feeling quite anxious and you might be feeling well my god if this is how the, the, the year starts what you know what is the future hold is this going to be an awful year is this going to be really bad no don't allow um you know if, if other people are going through purging or if, if places are going through purging or whatever and you're in a place where you're okay okay please don't allow those energies to bring you down okay more than ever on the planet we need positive people we need uplifters, we need storytellers and healers and people who care and, and, and comedians, people who want to make us laugh and want to make us smile and cheer us up. You know, um, we need those energies. And I know the Dalai Lama has a beautiful quote about that. He says something about the, the world doesn't need more, you know, accountants and lawyers. It needs more storytellers more healers, more singers, more dancers, more, more of these kind of people. That's absolutely true. So my advice to anyone who's feeling anxiety of this time or um, 
you know that it's bringing you down I relate I completely understand and what I do is I take breaks I don't watch mainstream TV I have a TV but I hardly ever turn it on um, I watch YouTube and that's what I do you know um, in conversation with people I might say I watch TV but that's code for I watch YouTube because that's actually what I watch uh, I get most of my news that way so I actually don't tune in to mainstream media anymore um, I might read a few headlines on The Guardian and things like that I do keep abreast with what's going on but I try to I try to stay away from that kind of thing I'm very conscious of what I consume uh, you know in my consciousness right and to me you know, I, I'm more interested in like uh, fine dining. I'll watch Krishnamurti at night, you know, I'll watch it. There's so much of his content. And he's a great person to tune into right now because he's got Saturn in the 10th house, an exalted Saturn in the 10th house. And we're going to be talking about um, that energy as we get into this video. So how about we get into the content because we're already at the six minute mark. I've waffled on for too long already. So. Saturn, next 2.5 years. I have some handwritten notes, I have slides, I have my little whiteboard here, it's all going on. Right. What did I write down here? This I just scribbled down, this was this afternoon, I went for a bit of a wander, I came back and I thought let me scribble these down. These are kind of like, it's sort of like predictions for the next 2.5 years, but I'm kind of wanting to see or say what the themes are going to be. Um, over the next couple of years. So I've got the word leadership, number one. The next thing I have written down is intelligent allocation of resources. That is going to come into focus in a big way. And we're going to be looking at um, the ethics behind decision making. We're going to be looking at the ethics and morals and values behind yeah, the intelligent allocation of resources. Money in particular, money is going to be huge, but it's not about how we make money I don't think I think it's going to be more about how we spend it how we allocate it um, and allocation of resources like water for example that's been highlighted by the Australian crisis right now I was on Facebook one of my friends posted uh, a 10 minute clip of 60 minutes Australia that was talking about the fact that somehow and I don't know how but Australia has allowed foreign entities to, there's like a secret market, it sounds very Scorpio to me, um, a secret market of all these international players that trade water just to make money. And apparently a lot of this water is being wasted, which is crazy, right? Because the farmers need that water, the land needs that water. You know, and a lot of people are saying that the crisis that's in Australia right now uh, it, it is connected with human decisions, bad decision making. Um, so that is definitely, Saturn is going to get right into that, let me tell you. Um, so that's going to be looked at. And what Saturn does is when he goes through his transit, and this is how I've felt it when I've been observing it in my life, he presses on the weak links. He's like, okay, let's press on that. And if you make it through a Saturnian test, you know, you'll get to keep that thing for a long, long time. But if he presses on a weak link and it breaks through, well, things get destroyed, right? So um, that's something that we're gonna be, we're gonna be looking at. Uh, Saturn over the next 2.5 years. So I've got the note here, decisions, decision making is going to come into focus. Our creativity is going to come into focus. How we pray, right, is going to come into focus as well. And what I've got here is that all these three things, decision making, creativity and how we pray, these all must include the one energy that we all are. Okay, so our decision making has to include everybody. Right? If I'm making a decision, I've got to think about all of humanity, if I can. Right? Saturn would love it if I think of all of humanity in my decision making. Okay, Because we want to impress Saturn here. Uh, I certainly want to impress Saturn. I always want to impress Saturn. So if I can make decisions that include all of humanity, that will be rewarded. Right? 
if my creativity includes all of humanity or serves all of humanity or is a gift to all of humanity, that will be rewarded, right? If I pray, okay, if I pray not just for myself but for absolutely everybody on the planet, that will be rewarded or that will be something that Saturn will be impressed by. And I figured that one out when I read this book. Well, I am reading this book. You can see I'm still going here. So I've got a little bit left. But um, this book, it is The Greatness of Saturn by Robert Svoboda. This is an excellent read. And the story in here of this king who loses his legs and he loses his, well, he loses his feet and his hands. It's very traumatic read that part and I was a bit freaked out but um, he goes through this horrible time and anyway Saturn then comes to him and, and says well what do you wish for and I wrote this uh, on my whiteboard here prayer I wouldn't wish this negative on anyone if that is how you pray Saturn will reward you right that's what this king said he said I wouldn't wish this horror that I've been through on anybody and Saturn was so impressed by him that he then restored his hands and feet and gave him a nice lady and money and I don't know whatever he wanted so that was all great um, some parts of this book are a little bit trippy they read like I mean look I've never taken LSD but I'd imagine that you know because some of the stuff in here it's like wow it's like it's like you're going on a trip or something so but hey you know it's it's good stuff so if you have time and you want to read that then please do read that book. Now, what else have I got here? Okay, this is a bit of a prediction. Expect more business failures. Hmm. So I've got a note here like redundancies. Um, there could be more redundancies or certain departments of organizations will close, will shut down, because I think there's going to be some financial squeezing that goes on over the next 2.5 years, right? Um, so anything that's not based on very good sound principles could be squeezed, could be closed. Uh, I've got a note here, collapse of giants. Yeah, some big um, organizations really could shut down. I've got a note here, financially squeezed. But then I've also got the note here, which is very interesting. At the same time, there'll be more opportunities to make money, okay? So on the one hand, Finances are going to be squeezed uh, across the board, I believe. And at the same time, because it's Earth as well, so we've got Saturn moving through Earth, people will be able to materialize. People will be able to materialize wealth, especially if it is based on the good principles. Think, um, you must read, I've got the book right here. My camera is sitting on top of it. Eckhart Tolle's A New Earth. Uh, the new earth is being born. If you're going to build a new earth business, if you're going to um, commit yourself, as I say, to creating something that is for the one, something that is for all of humanity, something that considers the environment, something that you know Saturn would be impressed by, if you're going to create that kind of thing, that will succeed. You will make money. You will do just fine. But uh, otherwise, you know, there could be some financial squeezing that goes on. And I mean that in a corporate sense. Okay, so, yeah, companies. So if you're a, you're a manager, let's say, and you, you're a marketing manager and, you know, each year you're given a £2 million budget for your advertising or something like that. Well, maybe over the next couple of years you see that reduce and you only get a million pounds and you've got to make that go further or, or whatever it is, right? Those are big figures. That's pretty amazing. Imagine that. Imagine having a million pounds to spend. How fascinating. Um, innovation. Do more with less. Yes. It's going to be a time of smart money. You're going to have to work. And that's what I mean by you're a manager and your budget's been halved. Right? You're going to have to do more with that smaller budget. Okay, um, That's one of the things that I'm, I'm seeing here. For some people it will be like this. For some people it, things might increase. They might be profiting. They might be doing really well. I do see it as being both at the same time. Okay, um, Because as Saturn goes through, 
You see karma. Some people, it'll be bad karma. Some people will be cashing in. Some people will be reaping good things. So in terms of what people are materialising, some people will be you know, materialising not so good things. Some people will be materialising very good things. Okay, uh, And that depends on the unique properties of your chart and what's going on in your chart. I've got the note here that need is the mother of invention, right? Um, that is a very Saturnian thing, okay? Need is the mother of invention. So where there's less money, you will have to be innovative and you will have to be creative. And that is going to come to the fore over the next 2.5 years. Styles of leadership. I've got it written here, direct. You're going to need a direct style of leadership. And I think we're going to get into the slides now. And how are we doing for time? 15 minutes. My goodness, I'm telling you. I have to speed up. I have to talk faster or something, don't I? got a note here that the last time we had Saturn in Capricorn was April 1990. So that was quite some time ago. And I'm going to look at what was happening at that time. Was there, was there a war going on at that time? Was that the Iraq War? Might as well look this up now, now that, now that you're here, Iraq War. I don't know if I've got that right, 1990? Gulf War, Gulf War, 1990. 2nd August 1990 to 28th Feb 1991. Okay, so there we go, so that happened. I know that the headlines are talking about war at the moment, but uh, I don't want to go on. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to go there. Uh, let me draw up this diagram. So 2.5 years of leadership. Well, actually, before I, before I draw this thing up, why don't I... I, I was going to do this slide as a... Um, I was actually going to put up some sort of infographic on the screen. But now I'm thinking, why don't I just write this out? So I might as well write it out. November 2014 to Feb 2017. What happened there? So that was Saturn in, I'm gonna put Scorpio. And I'm gonna write hidden agendas. Uh, then we've got, I'm just going to write 2017 to 2020. But if you want the dates, I'm kind of like looking Feb 2017 to Jan 2020. So that was Saturn in Sagittarius. And I'm going to say beliefs. And then we've got 2020, all oh right, I might as well write Jan 2020 to May 2022. This is Capricorn. Leadership. Okay, so. What do we have here? Scorpio, hidden agendas. Why have I got that phrase? November 2014 to Feb 2017. Let's think back to what was happening at that time. We had the US elections in 2016. WikiLeaks was the big thing. Everybody knew Julian Assange's name uh, and conspiracy theories were huge, right? So this is very Scorpio. And I've got the phrase hidden agenda or hidden agendas. This was the big thing at that time. Saturn was there. So you can see how Saturn colors the collective consciousness with a particular theme. So Scorpio, because Saturn was going through Scorpio over that 2.5 years, Saturn was materializing that. Where he goes, he materializes, he brings it to life. Saturn is air, it's thought and movement. I've been watching a lot of Jiddu Krishnamurti at the moment and he talks about time, thought and movement being one. And time, thought and movement, that that's, gets materialized, that gets made, right? So 
All this stuff got made during that time. WikiLeaks, Julian Assange being famous, his work being famous, um, conspiracy theories, you know, those weird videos of Hillary Clinton drinking a cold drink and then having a fit, like all that mad stuff that was going on, right? It's all this weird hidden stuff, illusory stuff, illusion, what was it? Then we've got um, Feb 2017, to January 2020, Saturn in Sagittarius, beliefs. So what was the big theme then? It was me too. It was digging for truth. Apologies if you can hear that very loud siren. That's very distracting. Sorry about that. Um, Saturn in Sagittarius, beliefs, right? So we've had the me too movement. We've had people digging for truth, truth versus lies. That's been a big theme. We've had veganism um, as a big theme coming up. We've had the environment, predators. I'm calling them predators, right? So was that royalty, A-list Hollywood people, that kind of thing. Um, who Ricky Gervais recently rightly took a swipe at, which was fantastic. Now. I'm calling that beliefs. If I'm going for one word there, I'm kind of thinking it's around beliefs. It, you could say truth as well. You could, maybe truth is the word there. But to me, the last two and a half years has been about how we treat each other. Really looking at how we treat each other. Is it right? You know, um, what's right? What? And there are a lot of things that people can't get away with anymore, right? Saturn's movement through that part of the zodiac has changed us, has changed us forever. Um, there are certain cultural things, societal things. It's to do with truth. It's to do with how we treat each other. And these are Sagittarian sort of things. Sagittarius really cares about that. Sagittarius really cares about, you know, who we are as people. It's kind of, it's fire there and it's leadership in terms of how we treat each other. So that's a, definitely a way of looking at Sagittarius. Truth, definitely. Uh, and now we've got January 2020 to May 2022. And that is Saturn in Capricorn. And I'm going to pick the word leadership. So what is going to be the theme over the next two and a half years? Well, it is all this stuff that I was talking about here, really, which is looking at our decision making, the ethics behind our decision making, the ethics, morals and values behind the allocation of resources and money and things like that. That's going to be um, a big theme over the next 2.5 years. It's going to be really fascinating. So what kind of leadership are we going to need? And I see that the camera is just about to pass out. That's okay, I'll keep going. I'll let it do its thing. Apologies everyone, the camera got cut, as it tends to do. But that's okay, we crack on regardless. Now I was just talking about what kind of leadership will be required. Let's take a look at this astrologically. Let's see what different types of leadership we have. So we've got Mars type leadership. Okay, so where do we see Mars leadership? Mars. The first house, right? Physical territory, physical territory. Mars, Aries. This is war, right? Great warriors will have a great Mars and they will be concerned with physical territory. They'll be concerned with acquiring physical territory. They will fight for what they believe in. Then we've got sun type of leadership. Now, where do we see that? <clears throat> we see that here in, in the fifth house. Sun type leadership. Now, okay, who, who do I want to have as an example for Mars? I do have a couple of examples uh, on my screen here. Mars leadership examples, Donald Trump. Um, yeah, he's got Mars in the first house, I'm pretty sure. He's got his Mars here in Leo, if I remember correctly. And I've also got Darth Vader as well as being a Mars kind of a leader. And 
we don't have Darth Vader's chart. Although, actually, why don't I I'll point up here and say I'll link to a video about his chart. Maybe I'm able to put in a card or something. I'll figure that out. I don't know. I do have a video about Darth Vader's chart and um, I count him as a Mars leader because he's not content with barking orders from behind a desk. He hops in a fighter jet and he has a go, right? At, um, you know, he, he goes into battle right? and that's very admirable. <clears throat> despite the fact that he's fighting for completely the wrong side, but, um, you know, the dark side, right? But anyway, so those are the two examples I have there. Now, when it comes to the sun, who's the example that I've got here? Now, the example that I've got here is Lee Kuan Yew. Lee Kuan Yew was very much a Leo sort of a leader. That man was building a kingdom, okay? So kingdom, we see that here, sun, um, this is sun kind of leadership. So Mars kind of leadership, fighting for what you believe in, physical territory, ownership, that kind of thing, conquering, right? Sun, sun people are building a kingdom, okay? And they are concerned with things like standards of living. What Lee Kuan Yew did, look at what he created. Such an amazing kingdom. Singapore is extraordinary. You don't see homeless people there. He created such a high standard of living for that country. <clears throat> I've got a note here, yeah, very high quality baseline, right? The design and build of a kingdom was what he was concerned with. All right, now what do we have here? We have here in the 10th house, Saturn. This is Saturn here, okay? And this is what we're concerned with. I should probably scrub this out. We're not concerned with this house, are we? We are concerned with the 10th house. This is the one we're concerned with. The 10th house, Saturn. This is the kind of leadership that we are very concerned with over the next 2.5 years. And <clears throat> what am I gonna say about this? So for Mars, I said physical territory and war. For Sun, I said kingdom. And now for Saturn, I'm gonna say oneness or the word whole, okay? Oneness is going to be the thing. Saturn is concerned with the one, with the all, right? The one energy that we all are. When Saturn wants you to make a decision, he doesn't want you, he wants you to be philosophical about it. This is a place of philosophical leadership, right? And my example here, is Marcus Aurelius. Marcus Aurelius is known as the Philosopher King and there's a wonderful lecture about him that I watched on Sunday night. I'm going to link to that below. It's such a good lecture. Do watch that lecture if you're interested in finding out more about Marcus Aurelius. I will be talking about him in upcoming videos. I am going to be going into who he was and his philosophy and all that kind of thing. So don't worry, I will be covering it. If you don't have time to watch that lecture, I'm gonna bring that content out anyway. But um, <clears throat> he was an amazing leader. And I've got some notes here about what kind of leader he was. So I've got the note here, the leader who walks his talk. Absolutely, right? This is the leader who doesn't fear death, who doesn't fear pain, and who doesn't fear humiliation or the opinions of others, right? Um, this leader fears only doing the wrong thing. Look at this, Saturn, right? Honesty, Saturn's got such a charge on honesty. Saturn is all about honesty. The kind of leadership that comes out of here is the leader who deliberates, who philosophizes ethics, right? Ethics, am I being honest? Am I being true? Am I being good? Is this decision encompassing the all? Is this decision, you know, this is not just about me and my fame or my ego. No, this decision has to be for my people. This decision has to be for the good of all. That's what we're dealing with here. That is Saturnian leadership, okay? 
that needs to happen over the next 2.5 years. Um, I've got a note here, how ethics, morality and values filter through the tools of society. And I'm probably going to cover this in my Saturn and Jupiter video. So do watch my Saturn and Jupiter video because this is where I'm going to go into this in a much more broad way. Um, so how ethics, morality and values filter through the tools of society. So that's through governments, it's through banks, it's through financial markets, um, it's through stock markets, it's through universities, it's through medical, right, pharmaceutical giants, hospitals, all that kind of thing. These are the tools of society, okay? And we're going to be looking at ethics, morality, and values, decision making. Decision makers are going to need to think twice, all right? Think not just twice, maybe a few times, you know, You've got to think of things from all angles as well. That's going to be the kind of leadership that's going to be needed over the next 2.5 years. You have to think about every dimension. Think before you do. Go down every single path, visualize them all. Visualize, okay, if I do this, what are the consequences? If I do this, what are the consequences? If I do this, what are the consequences? That's the kind of leadership that's going to be needed, right? This is not Mars leadership. Mars, look at this, Mars, charge, rah, go, just do it, just do it and don't think, right? Sun, okay, how is it different to sun leadership? It is different to lead, sun leadership because sun leadership is, there's an infinite quality, right? You got all the money in the world, think Singapore, think, you know, um, it's a very rich sort of a thing happening here, whereas Saturn is limitation. And Saturn, the other thing about Saturn is limitation. There's going to be limited budgets. Um, it's fascinating. And I'm going to go into this in a lot more detail, but I'm looking at the time. I've already spent 10 minutes, so I must carry on. Uh, let's have a look here. So your goals must include every single person on the planet. All right, you might not be able to consider every single person on the planet. Maybe that's a little bit ambitious, right? But try to consider as many people as you possibly can. Okay, try to, Saturn will reward you for the more people that you think about. If you can think about a lot of people, you've made a good decision. Okay, so that's what's going to be um, important over the next 2.5 years. And that lecture that I'm going to link you to, I've got a quote directly from Professor Michael Sugru. I think that's how you pronounce his name. He has this quote in that talk. He says, an organized soul which pursues rationally the ends which are good for all human beings. That's what you're going to want to be. You're going to want to be an organized soul that pursues rationally the ends which are good for absolutely everybody. If you can do that, you're going to have a good 2.5 years. All right. Now, why don't we get into the mini reports? Because quite frankly, I'm running out of, I'm running out of evening fast. I'm getting hungry. I want to have dinner. <laughs> And this is so much fun. I love doing this for you guys. It's a lot of fun. If only I didn't have to do things like eat and, you know, um, clean and organize my place and be an organized soul and all that stuff. Right, I'm going to put the whiteboard away. Let's get into it. Aries Moon. Aries Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now we are going to take a look at where Saturn is moving for you. Where is Saturn moving for you? Okay, Saturn is going to be 10th from your moon. What does this mean? <clears throat> is this a good transit? You know, I think this is a pretty good transit for you. Um, it's not a bad transit, okay? And depending on karma, depending on where you're at, and depending on your ascendant and all kinds of things. By the way, you can also watch these from your ascendant, so please do that um, if you want to do that. So look at it from your moon and look at it from your ascendant. You can look at it from your sun as well to get a really broad view. Uh, if you do that, that'll be <laughs> information overload, but um, from the moon is pretty important. This is a good transit. So weak links will be tested in your career. Saturn's going to move through your career sector, so you are probably going to be busy. Uh, and Saturn will want to see how you do in certain work scenarios, in certain work um, situations. If you've got quite an ego work-wise, uh, expect that to be tested, let me tell you. Um, 
And that, that's not a bad thing to have ego in terms of work. It's important to have ego at work. You have to have some amount of ego. You know, creating a LinkedIn profile is, you know, healthy ego, right? We need healthy ego too. But if you've got unhealthy ego, well, that could be tested. Uh, let's say you're not working in a traditional sense then your decision-making capacity will be tested. How you run and structure your life will be tested. Yeah, so this is an interesting thing. If you're not employed, and I've seen this happen in people's lives, that other domains of work, or their work sector does get tested, but in different domains, or like you might, you might be part of a club or something. Um, I knew a guy who joined this ski club and um, he said he did so with the desire to be on holiday, but it ended up becoming like an office around him, right? So you will have an office-like environment around you over the next 2.5 years, whether you're working or not, right? You will be tested, okay? How you run and structure your life will be tested. Um, I've got a note here, bosses may be hard on you. Yeah, that could happen. Put your head down, work hard. That will be the solution to everything, humility and working hard right? Put your head down, work. You will get through anything. Saturn will reward you. Um, I've got a note here, yeah, ego may be curb tested. Be financially conservative. You've got a third aspect there. Um, you may feel strongly that you want to reorganize or restructure your debts, right? So you might have the opportunity to make a lot of headway on that over the next 2.5 years, which is great. Mother's health may be a concern or come into focus, that could happen. So that's obviously seventh aspect on the fourth house there, uh, I would guess. Yes, it is. Uh, if self-employed, weak links in your business will be tested. Yep. All right. So if you're running a business um, or if you're self-employed, yeah, your business may be tested. Perhaps your image with the public. So let's say you run a YouTube channel or something like that, right? Um, your, that interface between you and the public, that could be being tested. With the 10th aspect, weak links in marriage may be tested as well. So marriage, partnership, business partnership, creative partnerships, anywhere where you have close partnerships, close interactions with one other person, that could be tested. But I've got a note here that, you know, remain honest through absolutely everything and you will certainly be rewarded. Saturn is he wants to help you. He wants to reward you. The thing that you have to remember with Saturn is be honest, love the self, love others. Okay. And why do you love yourself? Because you are a gift to others. Okay. That is another, that's a huge component of self-love that people forget to talk about. There is a point to self-love. It's not having a bubble bath on a Friday afternoon. No, it's about being good because you're gonna give yourself and your wisdom and your gifts and who you are, you're gonna give that to everybody, right? You gotta keep you good, okay? So that's really, really important. So as long as you do that, Aries Moon, you're gonna be absolutely fine. So I wish you well, Aries Moon. Thank you so much for joining. And we are now gonna welcome Taurus Moon. Taurus Moon, welcome. Thanks so much for joining. Now, Saturn will be ninth from your moon. So what does this mean? This is actually, it's not too bad, you know. Um, as with anything Saturnian, there are three particular places where Saturn just loves to be, right? Ninth from the moon is not one of them, but there is good here, okay? And I've been searching for the good for you, and there's a lot of good. So this, I reckon, the next 2.5 years is your time to learn, okay? You're gonna learn a lot. You're gonna acquire, um, you have the potential to acquire quite a chunk of knowledge and wisdom over the next 2.5 years that you will be able to profit from. So this could be very career enhancing, okay? Um, I've got a note here, time to structure life so you can learn what you need to learn to go to the next level up in life. Yeah, this is time to really educate yourself for the next layer up in your career. It might require some training, it might require some executive education. So this could be time to appoint a mentor or a guru. Um, this would be a great time to do that. It might be time to enroll in higher or executive education. Work to be done in terms of professional knowledge. Yeah, so you've got a real um, opportunity to take your professional level to, a, to professional knowledge to a whole new level, right? 
uh, that will make you head and shoulders above competition. Okay, um, your beliefs may be tested. Uh, weak links here will be tested. So beliefs, and this could be to do with how you treat other people, how other people treat you, your beliefs about your own self, your beliefs about your own self-worth in this world, um, who you are, how you be. A lot of these things could be tested here, okay? Um, and look, if you're, I mean, you're tuning into a report like this, you can fly through this stuff because you're up on it. You know what's coming, right? Just keep doing your spiritual work. Keep upping your self-worth. Keep tuning into the right teachers. Louise Hay is a beautiful teacher for upping self-worth. Um, I, I really like her for that anyway. Um, opportunities. So there's a third aspect on, I suppose that would be your 11th house. Could be a time where your network grows considerably. So depending on karma, depending on your chart, depending on how things are placed for you, your ascendant, a few things, um, how Saturn operates in your chart. I mean, this could be an amazing time to really build your network. It could also be a time where your network grows slowly but consistently, right? So I don't want to overpromise here because depending on your Saturn, you know, it could be it could be slow or it could be whoosh, like it could be amazing. So, um, but your network will grow over this time. I've got a note here, again, you could be tested here. Do you rise up or do you shrink, right? So when there's network growth, there's the potential for you to be seen a lot more. And do you rise to that? And do you allow yourself to be seen? Do you give your presence or do you shrink back? That's something that that could be um, something that you're looking at. This links into your seventh aspect, which is on courage, yeah, and your courage. Your courage will be tested. Wow, I liked, I remember when I was looking at you, Taurus Moon, everything linked in. Every little aspect was like feeding the other. You've got a really good, uh, this is a good Saturn transit, even though technically it's kind of not, but it is. I, I love this one. I remember as I was going through it. So your courage will be tested. So as I was saying, do you let yourself be seen? Do you give yourself? Do you share your knowledge? Okay, so you're going to be accumulating a lot of knowledge. Do you share that? Do you give that? You can give that while you receive it. Re receive it. It's fresh. Give it, right? Um, so your courage is going to be possibly tested uh, as well. Do you give yourself? Do you market yourself? Do you give your gifts to the one energy that is all of humanity, right? Do you give yourself back to the world, you know, because the world created you and you give yourself back, right? Um, this links into the 10th aspect on the sixth house. Do you serve all of humanity? Yeah, service, your service in the world. That's also going to be something that's looked at over the next 2.5 years. So that's, that's really big. Is there a service aspect to who you are and to what you do? Are you giving yourself in some way, right? Um, and it can be things like volunteering. It can be things like social work. It can be things like you've got a particular skill. It can be the lawyer that does pro bono work, okay? And I, I do a bit of this on Cora.com. I answer questions for free, you know. Um, I love doing a bit of that. So, yep, do you do some of that? Is there an outlet for that for you? If you don't have an outlet, create one, right? I've got a note here, yeah. Do you share the knowledge you are accumulating to serve all of humanity? That is going to be in focus for you over the next 2.5 years, Taurus Moon. It's, you know, it's a good transit. I like what you've got going on here. I, I don't see that. And I think, I mean, you're coming out of eighth from the moon. So quite frankly, next 2.5 years is gonna be better. I'm pretty sure about that. So Taurus Moon, I wish you well. And we are now gonna welcome Gemini Moon. Gemini Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, Saturn is eighth from your moon. Okay, this is a bit of a tough transit. Uh, you are going to be tested. You're going to be tested on a few fronts. So financially, this can be um, a little bit tight at times. Okay, I'm not going to say for the whole thing. Just at times, it might be a little bit tough, a little bit tight here and there. Um, 
It may have you depending on others for their resources, right? You might be tested in terms of how well do you... Um, you might be put in situations where you have to depend on others, okay? That's why I say this is a tough transit. I know this transit, I've been through it, and this is what happened in my life. I did have to depend on others. Um, not the best transit. Uh, and I've heard from several people as well that this is a transit where that kind of thing can happen. Not for the whole duration, um, just potentially for, for bits of it. So I've got a note here, save money, don't spend lavishly. Okay, so the next 2.5 next 2 years, don't, um, don't be too extravagant is what I would say, basically. Got a note here, third aspect onto 10th house of career will test weak links in your career and profession in the world. Okay, Gemini Moon, are you doing what you really love doing professionally, career-wise? Are you engaged in something that you're passionate about? Are you engaged in something that you would do anyway, even if there was no money, right? Um, this, this, this can be a really big time. This is a time of career transition. And this is the time when I transitioned into astrology. And this is the time when my teacher, Ernst Wilhelm, transitioned into his career of astrology, right? Uh, this is a classic time of career. Tr Hi, Gemini Moon. Apologies, the camera got cut and I'm just plugging myself back in and... Oh, I've just transferred the files. I'm completely lost. I think I said something about this is a classic time of... And then I have no idea <laughs> my notes. I'm just uh, getting back up to speed. I'm so sorry. I might also take an opportunity to have a sip of water as well. Thank you, Gemini Moon. You're very kind. Um, I've got like, quite a few of these to rush through. I'm telling you now got so many to do we're only up to the third one I think I was saying that this is a classic time of career transition that's where I was basically I've mentioned the part about don't spend lavishly third aspect on 10th house of career will test weak links in your career and profession this can be a time of career transition it can be and if not transition then um, let me just make sure that, yeah, that's all all right. If not transition, then you'll be shifting your career up a notch. Um, there'll be a new level of career or, or maybe as opposed to going up a notch or up a level, maybe you are revealing a deeper layer or, you know, and that actually is a bit more eighth house really, isn't it? Um, revealing a deeper layer, tapping into deeper layers within yourself to do with career. It's, it's time for career to, to transition for you. That's, that's definitely how I see that. Um, I've got a note here that family relationships will be tested. All right, so karma paid or cleared in relation to family of origin. Yes, this stuff is big. That, and, and a lot of that can happen behind the scenes, you know. Um, and as long as you just keep, keep being spiritual, keep being good, keep being honest, keep caring about yourself and others and um, wanting to do the right thing, as long as you've got your intentions in the right place, your heart's in the right place, all of that, you'll be fine, you know. Um, and if anything, you won't just be fine, you'll reap from this time as well. You can really reap, um, especially when it comes to the family stuff. You can have a lot of, if there is any lower energy, lower density, toxic, any of that stuff, that can be cleared right out, okay? Amazingly deep healings and clearings can happen for you in this next 2.5 years. So you've definitely got that to look forward to. 10th house aspect onto 5th house from moon will test your creative projects, will test your relationship with your children, right? Will test your businesses. Maybe it's a business. Maybe, you know, what are you giving birth to? Maybe you're writing a book. 
you know um, maybe it's an entrepreneurial venture what's your baby right so whatever your baby is that's going to be tested and you're going to be serious about it and things are going to be restructured around it and you're going to be strategic about it so if it's your creativity you're going to be very strategic about it and very organized about it and you're going to achieve a lot too um, I've got a note here you might be squeezed budget wise yes that is possible that's possible for a lot of us um, but what I will say about this thing about being squeezed budget wise is that if you look at it from your moon you might be being squeezed but if you look at it from your ascendant you might be cashing in you might be having a wonderful transit so that is another thing that I will say to you the other thing is also look at the Ashtag Varga scores uh, and, and you know deeper things like that and you'll be able to see what kind of a transit this is going to be so don't just judge it based off one little reading of what I'm saying here there is a lot more for you to look at as well I've got a Seneca quote to share with you there is a noble manner of being poor and who does not know it will never be rich now I'll share I'll, I'll do a long one for you Gemini moon I'll make the other ones short how about that I'm gonna spend some time with you I normally give extra time to Scorpio moon but I'm going to be quick with them today. I'll give you the extra time. One of the things I've been thinking about is this concept of Marcus Aurelius, the, um, the Roman emperor who could, he, you know, he could buy anything. He had all the money in the world. He could have any woman he wanted. He could have anything he wanted. And of course, when you're in that situation, you quickly come to the same place that I know very well, which is... I have no money and can't do anything, <laughs> right? But, but both places are the same. That is the potential of this Saturn 8th from the moon that you can come to. This is the conclusion that you can come to. The no, there is a noble manner of being poor and who does not know it will never be rich. Through this transit, you will discover that it doesn't matter. If, if, you're, if, if you're the richest person in the world and you can afford absolutely everything, and you're taken to a place in life where you're an entrepreneur and you can't afford anything. Both of you are actually in the same place because what counts isn't what you can buy. It doesn't have anything to do with money. It has everything to do with yourself and who you are. Okay, and that's what Marcus Aurelius quickly came to. He came to the point that, yeah, okay, so what? I could buy anything. Once you've done that 10, 20, 1,000 times, it's boring. Right? I mean, who wants to keep buying a Chanel handbag or a Ferrari or whatever it is, right? You've done that. Well, okay, now what? You know, and, and when you get through that place of, um, when you go beyond money, right? See, the difference between me and Marcus Aurelius is, I've been thinking about a lot about this. The difference is he can afford to buy everything. I can't. But the point is, he gets to that place where he doesn't want to buy everything, right? And I'm there too, you know what I mean? It's very interesting. My thoughts are still half-baked on this, but basically it is this Seneca quote, there is a noble manner of being poor and who does not know it will never be rich. Through this transit, you can get to a place where you realize that the point of life has nothing to do with money. It has everything to do with who you are as a person. And do you give that back to the collective, right? Saturn transit, we're talking about Saturn, we're talking about giving yourself back to the one, right? The all that is one. Gemini Moon, there are going to be videos about this, so keep, stay tuned to the channel. I will explain that Marcus Aurelius thing, probably in a coaching video. It, it's, uh, I'm working on it. Anyway, we are now going to welcome Cancer Moon. Cancer Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. We're already at the seven minute mark. Oh my gosh, I am spending a lot of time here. Saturn is seventh from your moon. What does this mean? So your public image, your relationship with your public, right? Maybe you've got a big Instagram or a big YouTube or something like that. Um, your relationship with public and or spouse will be tested. It could be to do with your business. If you're self-employed, that will be tested. Um, any weak links in these areas will be tested. Saturn will be pressing on these. And now know that if you get through, if you pass one of Saturn's tests, you get to keep that thing forever. But if the weak links, he breaks something, well, you'll be glad that it breaks <laughs> because he's clearing way for something better to come along, okay? Uh, if you make it through the test, what you have built is here to stay, yeah. You may be required to travel, um, foreign business, dealings, that kind of thing, that might open up for you. 
uh, academic learnings in relation to your business will be important. It will be important to fill up on knowledge linked in with your profession. And through that knowledge, you will be able to take your career to the next level. So that's pretty amazing. It could be a time to appoint a mentor or a guru. Um, your physical body will also be tested. Okay, so you could get tired a bit more often. And if you do, just rest, right? Saturn wants you to work a little bit every day. He doesn't want you to kill yourself, all right? He doesn't want you to work too hard. He wants you to just do a little bit each day. If you're tired, rest. Make sure you look after that physical body of yours. Tenth aspect on the fourth house, so home life. Um, you may, yeah, see, okay, so this is a bit of a challenge here. You may not get the time that you want to relax at home, um, or this could manifest as an impact on your mother's health. So it might be that you, you do have to work hard, and you, you do, because Saturn is seventh from your moon. So a remedy over this time is actually to work hard, um, but not too hard, okay? So don't, don't push yourself, don't work too hard because there is that aspect on your physical body. But a remedy will be to keep working and to put your head down and to do your work. Um, yeah, I've got a note here, work hard and you'll prosper. So Cancer Moon, thank you so much for joining. We are now gonna welcome Neo Moon. Neo Moon, welcome, thank you so much for joining. So you got Saturn six from your moon. Oh, hello, this is excellent. I love talking about good transits and you've got one of them. So um, yeah, what, only three get excellent here today. That's right, you are one of the three. So for 2.5 years, you got a good run, all right? So I really hope it plays out that way. Um, this is a platform building time. This is great for career growth. This can be a great time to meet a partner as well. Um, Saturn will be actively looking to reward you for past karma. He's going to actively give you opportunities, all right? So keep your eyes open, keep your eyes peeled, look out for those, they are coming. Third aspect on the eighth house, uh, other people will want to help you, okay? Um, people will be generous with their finances. Then we've got seventh aspect on your twelfth house, so I'm saying here, getaways to foreign places will offer nice retreats. Uh, you know, if it all gets too much at some point, you will be able to have some nice holidays, some nice little breaks possibly, um, opportunities to truly relax. So that should be good. Tenth aspect on third house. This can mean that you've got the opportunity to grow your network and your courage should be good. Your self-esteem should be good. How you feel about yourself should be really good. Okay, so that will help you to grow your network as well because it's about your presence, right? Your power is your presence. Your power is that aura that you radiate, radiate out into the world. So this should be quite good for you. Um, Saturn, yeah, will give you your gifts. Share who you are. I've got a note here. Do you share who you are with all of humanity? And that is that concept of your presence is your power. And are you sharing that with the world? Share it with the world and watch the world uh, reward you. So Leo Moon, you've got a really good transit here. Please do make the most of it. I'm very excited for you. All right, Virgo Moon. Virgo Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now you've got Saturn fifth from your moon. All right, this is very interesting. I like this transit. Your creativity in the world is going to be structured or restructured. Um, creative decision-making will be in focus for you. Your relationship with your children may be tested, okay? So anything to do with creativity, think about like your business, maybe you're writing a book, um, it's an entrepreneurial venture, your project, it's your baby, right? That's your baby, or it's your actual baby, it's your child, okay? So you are gonna be focused on all aspects to do with this. You might get quite serious about your strategic decision making in these areas, you know. Um, yeah, I've got to note here, your, your relationship with your children may be tested. How you shape your children will be in focus. How, you know, you'll care about parenting. You'll care about, am I doing a good job? In a strategic sort of a sense. Entrepreneurial ventures will be tested. Things will materialize good, not so good, okay? So what kind of results can you expect? This depends on your past karma and how you've been operating with Saturn in the past. 
either you're cashing in or you're paying. I, I don't know because I haven't seen your chart and I don't know the particulars. Um, the other thing that you want to look at is your ascendant. You want to look at all of this from the ascendant as well. Um, I've got to note here your business will be tested as will any partnerships or your marriage. That's via third aspect. Seventh aspect is how uh, it's on how opportunities come into you. Your luck as well. All of that could be being restructured, reshaped for you, right? So it might be hard to grow your network at this time equally. It, you might materialize very rapidly. You might um, be growing your network quite a bit at this time. This could be the time where it really grows. Yeah, it depends. It depends on some karmic things here. Tenth house aspect on second house means relationships with family of origin will be tested. That will be tested. So there could be, uh, and or relationships with seniors or your bosses or things like that, but it's mainly family of origin. There could be healing there, and that's really good. Okay, so Virgo moon, this is a fascinating transit for you. Um, and I think you can do a lot with it. I think you can achieve a lot with it. Just remember to keep being creative. Just remember to keep working hard. Um, keep being honest. Keep loving yourself. Keep loving others. You'll be absolutely fine. All right. And we are now going to welcome Libra Moon. Libra Moon, welcome. Just going to check the time. We're doing quite good. Now, Saturn is fourth from your moon. So what have we got going on here? Home life, domestic scene, we'll have the Saturnian treatment, okay. Uh, weak links will be tested in regards to your home life or your domestic scene. Perhaps it's how you live, um, perhaps it's where you live, you know, that kind of thing. Um, you'll be rewarded for past karmas. So if you're, a lot of this transit does depend on how you've been over the past very many years, okay. So you might be cashing in, on some good karma, you might be paying a little bit, right? So um, with some transits, some of these transits, I'm absolutely able to say for sure, you're gonna have a good transit. For you, it's a bit of a mixed bag. So ease at home, ease of purchasing a property or moving home, right? So some of these areas will be in focus. Um, I've got no, all things could be tough, okay? Mother's health could be under pressure. Um, you may not get a chance to relax. So there's also a third aspect on your sixth house. So your service to the world or career could be being tested. Enemies, court battles, if you're a social worker, your workload in relation to the work you do, these realms could all get busy. Maybe you're an alternative healer or something like that. Um, things could get quite busy for you. Uh, your professional career, 10th house, will also be tested and checked. Okay, uh, your physical health may be being impacted and that's, yep, there's a 10th house aspect on the first house. So rest when you need to rest. Don't overdo it. Okay, Saturn does want you to work hard, but he wants you to work smart and he wants you to work a little bit each day. He doesn't want you to work like 14 hour days or any of that. Don't do that. Um, don't overdo it in the next 2.5 years. Do work hard and do work a little bit each day consistently, but don't don't kill yourself, right? Um, this is the perfect time. Mm, I've got a note here. This is a great time to get out of addiction. If you've got any addiction issues, if you've got, you know, um, say for example, you know, you're having three coffees every day and you're like, oh, I don't like that about me. This is a great time for you to sort that stuff out. Um, I've got a note here. Great time for healing a lot of stuff. And I've got a note here. Yeah, your cosmic personal trainer is here. So use this time with Saturn. Work with Saturn. Work with him to get your life into shape and get your life into the kind of shape that you would be really proud of and that you would really love. Uh, Saturn's here to help you. So that's, that's really good, Libra Moon. So Libra Moon, thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Scorpio Moon. Scorpio Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. How are you doing? How are you doing with all this new activity Saturn third from your moon. We always have a chat about this and you know I had a note from one of you saying um, how quickly is this energy going to come in. It might take time okay. It might not um, kick in for you immediately. There are some people where it's already kicked in where it started kicking in like a couple of months ago. Some of you it might take a few months okay. I know with me personally it takes time for me to, to tap into Saturnian energy. Actually, well, sometimes it takes time. Sometimes it's pretty instant, actually, yeah. 
Um, I have had some experiences where it's been kind of instantaneous, but equally, I know last year I I was very I was I didn't feel Saturn as much because Ketu was in the way. I definitely had that experience. So this does depend on your unique chart. How easily are you going to feel Saturnian energy? Your chart counts here, right? Um, I would also say to look at look at these transits from your ascendant as well. Definitely look from your ascendant. Look from your sun if you want to as well. I mean, if you look at these from all three of those, you're really covering just about the whole zodiac possibly. But um, it, it's really interesting. The other thing you'll want to do is have a look at Ashtag Virgo scores as well to see you know, how you're going to reap. But um, yeah, I do have the note here. might take a few months for this energy to kick in. See how you go. Um, I've got a note here, platform building time. We've definitely spoken about this. Um, so let's take a look at the aspects because I want to give you some unique content here. So courage. Your courage is about to get a reboot. You are going to be courageous again if you lost a bit of courage, if you lost a bit of self-esteem or any of that that is going to start building up for you. So start building up new circles of friends. This is a great time to be doing that. Be promoting yourself in the world. That's a very important activity for you right now. Uh, third house aspect on fifth house of creativity. You're going to get serious about your creativity, right? It's time to structure it, shape it, be strategic with your creativity. If you're a parent, you're going to get quite serious about parenting, right? You are shaping a young mind. That is such a privilege and that's such an amazing thing to do. So you're definitely going to be taking that to a new level and be doing really well at that as well. Um, seventh house aspect on your ninth house. So this might be time to appoint a mentor or a guru if you haven't got one already. It's a great time to get really knowledgeable about aspects of your career so that you are head and shoulders above competitors. This is a great time. Um, for you to be taking on higher education, executive education, even just doing some, something simple like what I'm doing. I'm reading books every night, okay? I've stopped because before I was watching like YouTube videos and like I keep clicking on them and all of a sudden it's 11 o'clock and I, so I'm not doing that now. I'm reading for an hour, half an hour to an hour before I sleep each night and it's wonderful. So maybe you wanna start something like that. Um, so yeah, might be time for higher education higher or executive education. 10th house aspect on your 12th house, there could be a little bit of a drain on your finances. So this might be one where you wanna see um, how Saturn is playing out from your ascendant because you wanna see the money thing. I know for me, I've got a bit of a drain on my finances from my ascendant, but from my moon, it's looking quite good. So I know that it's, it's not gonna be disastrous, but it will be, I'll have to be a little bit tight. So if you're looking at it from Scorpio Moon, uh, I'm gonna say that you will be inspired to sort out your debts. Um, it might take some effort, might take a bit of work, but I've got the note here, be financially conservative. So do check from your ascendant because maybe you're cashing in, you're reaping uh, from your ascendant perspective. Okay, we are now gonna welcome Sagittarius Moon. Sagittarius Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. We have a couple of minutes left on the timer here. So Saturn is second from your moon. Oh, welcome to the final phase of Sade Sate. My goodness. I've got a note here, the worst is over. Let's hope so, Sagittarius Moon. I think it is. I think it must be. Uh, how are you going to navigate this 2.5 years? Well, what have we got here? So family relationships will be tested. Um, big savings and wealth your, your big money, your big savings, that will be, um, how, how you manage that is going to be tested, quite possibly, or restructured. That area of your life might be restructured as well, okay? Um, home life, domestic scene, links here will be tested as well, possibly. Um, you may find that, you know, yeah, you may find that you'll be able to rest. So things like getting adequate rest, um, maybe moving, maybe property deals that you have to deal with. Some of that could be tested. Uh, if karma isn't ideal, you may not be able to rest easily or your mother's health will suffer or something like that. There might be something along those lines, but I'm not, 
I'm not seeing that it's that, that's just an aspect. You don't have to worry too much about that. At times, you may find that you're required to be dependent on others. Okay, seventh aspect on the eighth house. So this is the whole money thing. At times during this transit, there might be some times where money is tight and you have to depend on others. That could be how this plays out. It might not be. Depends what else you've got going on. It also does depend on your ascendant. Maybe things from your ascendant are going to be stronger. Check your ascendant. Maybe you're cashing in there. Okay, so this transit is a bit of a mixed bag. I mean, you're still inside of Southeast, so there's going to be some tight spots. Um, tenth aspect on eleventh house. So how opportunities come in for you um, could be being restructured. Uh, luck. Your luck might be being restructured, right? Um, it's really interesting. And this could, how opportunities are, are coming in for you, you could materialize some really good stuff there. And that does depend on past karma um, and how you've been interacting with Saturn up until now. So this could be really good. And luck as well could be amazing. Saturn could be manifesting some luck for you. Your network, yeah, I've got a note here. Your network may grow big at this time or it may be slow to grow. It does depend uh, on... Hi Sagittarius Moon, sorry about that, the camera got cut. I think I was saying it depends on your karma. I think we got to the end of my notes for you. I think I was talking about the 11th house, 10th aspect on your 11th house. So I was saying that opportunities, how opportunities come in for you may be being restructured. Luck as well, but through that Saturn might manifest um, some good things for you. It kind of, it, it does depend. So. Um, but yeah, if this wasn't the most ideal of readings, then look at this from your ascendant and see you might be cashing in, okay? It might, you might be going through really good transit. I know for me personally, I've got one's good and then one's financially a bit of a drain. So yeah, I've got a mixed bag myself. All right, Sagittarius Moon, well, thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Capricorn Moon Capricorn Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is your time. My goodness, you are in the thick of it. You are knee deep in Sadi Sati. You are in, what have I got here? Yes, I have a note here. You are working with the best personal trainer in the cosmos. I've got a roomy quote for you. If you are irritated by every rub, how will you ever get polished, right? That's a big quote. I've got a note here, allow yourself to be polished. This is a big time. Sade Sade is a big time. And I think when people go through big times, if you can hold the consciousness that knows that I am going through a tough time, but this is the time that's gonna make me, oh my God, well, you've profited immediately, right? If you can hold that view in the now. You are profiting when you're in a tough time and you're thinking this is the tough time that's clocking up a wonderful flip side for me that I know I'm going to cash in on. If you can hold that, you will do amazingly well. It's very Abraham Hicks. It's very, study the teachings of Abraham Hicks uh, for that type of stuff. Um, I've got a note here, Saturn in your first house, you may need to rest more take the rest. Saturn doesn't want you to kill yourself. He doesn't want you to overwork. He wants you to work, but he doesn't want you to overwork. He doesn't want you to ruin your body or any of that. Okay, so look after your physical body. Um, yeah, don't overdo it. Third aspect on third house of courage. You may not feel like putting yourself out there that much uh, over this next 2.5 years. So listen to that. Okay, listen to what your guidance is. This is going to be a time when you really learn as well how to tune into the universe where it's just you and the universe. There are going to be times over this next 2.5 years where you discover what that means. You discover what it is to be just you and the universe and you listening to your intuition and you honing that and developing that and really getting in tune with the all is one energy. You're going to you're going to go deep with Saturn here and it's going to be quite something. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. Um, seventh house aspect on seventh house. Weak links in business and marriage are being tested uh, as are weak links in tenth house of career. All that's being tested. All that's being worked through. Okay. 
Allow it to be tested. When Saturn presses on a weak link, what's he doing? Well, he's looking for, okay, am I gonna fall through, right? If he falls through, he'll push that away. You don't need that, right? If, if he's pressing on the weak links and you get to keep it, you get to keep it forever. So that's amazing, right? Um, I've got a note here, slow down, don't rush, be honest, love yourself, love others, and you'll be just fine. And you know that Capricorn moon, and we've talked about this before, I'm sure we have. So I'm sure you're navigating this time very well, and uh, I commend you. I care deeply about all of uh, my Sadi Sati people, and uh, you know I'm looking after you with whatever encouraging words I, I can give you. So um, take care, Capricorn moon. You are amazing, and know that, and know that you are in, like, the, the tough training ground, but it's the training ground of champions, Sadi Sati, right? You will come out a winner, I promise. Uh, so thank you so much, Capricorn Moon, and we're now going to welcome Aquarius Moon. Aquarius Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Saturn is 12th from the moon. Oh my goodness, Aquarius Moon. Welcome to Sadi Sati, right? I've got a note here. This is the training ground of champions. This is a tough time, potentially potentially a tough seven and a half years okay it's so not a short amount of time but it can be very busy and it can go quite quickly and you can achieve a lot this can be an amazing time it depends on a lot of things it depends on how your Saturn is it depends on how much karma you've cleared in the past it depends on what spiritual work you've been doing over the last however many years or are you new to this or where are you with all these things right a lot of things factors that um, will affect and impact how this time is going to go for you. I've seen Sadi Sati be the time that makes a person, that gives them all the important stuff that they need, that will give you a house and your husband and children and this and that. And I've seen it set people up. I've seen it do amazing things. I've also seen this be a really, really tough people where tough time where people go through. Um, you know, a dark night of the soul and some big stuff like that. I've got a quote here. Rumi says, if you are irritated by every rub, how will you ever get polished? Okay, and this is the time period where Saturn is polishing you and he's polishing you into the diamond that you are. The rough areas, the rough bits are going to be, they're going to be stripped away, all right? And you will come out shining. You will come out like a diamond. Um, it, it's going to be amazing. So I've got a note here, allow yourself to be polished. I've got a note here, your subconscious mind and your sense of spirituality is going to be restructured during this time. It's not a small thing. This is big. This is really major. Um, if you are a spiritual person, you're on it. Okay. If you're already spiritual, if you're already doing this path, if you're, you are, you're watching this video, so you're on it, right? Saturn may likely reward you for all that you've been doing. Okay. And Saturn will be looking for opportunities over this time to reward you as well. Uh, people don't often talk about that, but you do get rewarded during Sadi Sati period. It's not all bad news. Um, you know, yeah, I've got to note here, this can be a time where you profit big time. I've seen it. I've seen it in people's charts. I've seen them reap, really reap during this time. Third aspect on your second house will mean family relationships get tested. And I think that's where Sadi Sati can be really, really tough because not only is your subconscious mind getting a restructure or an overhaul, toxic things are going to come up and all that, and family stuff is coming up as well, right? So this, that's why this can be a, a challenging time. Um, let's have a look here. Seventh aspect on sixth from the moon means your service to the world will be tested. Court cases, competition, you know, any of that. Yep, that, that can be tested. Uh, you're going to want to be providing service to the world as a remedy, okay? So if you can, if you are going through tough stuff, try to do pro bono work or help people for free. Maybe you're an alternative healer. And maybe you're able to um, give sessions to people in need for free, that kind of thing. I do some pro bono work. Uh, I go on Quora.com and I answer questions for free and things like that. Um, so, you know, try to find ways to serve people uh, for free if, if you can. 
Uh, beliefs may be tested, 10th house aspect on 9th house. Yeah, what truth means to you will be tested. A lot of internal stuff is going to be tested and examined by Saturn during this time. Equally, this can be a fantastic time. And yeah, this is where it's good for you. This can be a great time to learn a lot. This can be a great time to really hit the books. Um, take your knowledge to the next level up. Okay, and this can be very rewarding professionally because you can be head and shoulders above your competitors, right? Because you've read 10 more books than they have. And, you know, um, this can be really amazing in that sense. Because hopefully with Saturn being in the 12th, maybe you it's manifesting time for you, okay? You might be time rich, right? So use that time, don't waste it. So this could be a time to learn a lot. Maybe you want to get a mentor or a guru. Um, maybe you want to work with a coach. <laughs> it doesn't have to be me. You can find someone in your local area or, um, you know, there's that kind of thing. But like maybe mental guru, maybe it is about professional knowledge. Maybe it is about, but maybe it is working on your subconscious mind and your spirituality and, and how you feel about things. Um, but I've got a note here, take your knowledge to the next level. That is a real potential of this time. So Aquarius Moon, thank you so much for tuning in. I wish you well. Uh, I've got a lot of care and a lot of feeling for all my Sadi Sati people. So over this time, I'm going to be giving you encouragement and I'm going to be, um, you know, trying to find good news for you to share with you that you will be able to see that, you know what, this is an amazing time. This is an amazingly rich time. Uh, astrologically, internally, how you see yourself, you're going to grow leaps and bounds. It's going to be amazing. You're going to come out of this very, very strong. So I wish you well, Aquarius Moon. And we are now going to welcome Pisces Moon. Pisces Moon, welcome. You are one of the lucky ones. You've got an excellent transit. I haven't written the word excellent in too many places on my presentation slides. <laughs> is there in three places, you're one of them. So Saturn is 11th from your moon. Now I've probably raved about this for you before. I think we've talked about this before. Um, how opportunities come in for you is going to be structured. Luck is also seen from here. So your luck is gonna be restructured as Saturn moves through this. He might be manifesting luck for you. He's gonna manifest opportunities for you. As I say, this is a platform building time. This is really good. Saturn actively wants to give you opportunities to build the next level of your life. This is very exciting. Third aspect on your first house of self. Okay, so this is, um, we're getting deeper into the news here. And yes, third aspect could mean that you feel tired at times. Um, and that might lead to worry because you might think, God, I'm not energetic and I'm not getting out there and I'm not capitalizing on this 2.5 years. Don't be hard on yourself. If you're tired, rest. Okay, rest. You're going to want to feel good in order for the good opportunities to come in. Okay, don't work too hard. Don't stress yourself out. Really, really important. Saturn wants you to work a little bit each day. He wants your consistency. He doesn't want you to kill yourself. Okay, so don't work too hard. Um, yeah, please rest when you feel the need. Seventh house aspect on fifth house of creativity means your creativity is being restructured. This is very exciting. Um, it could be to do with, say for example, if you're writing a book, maybe you're launching a venture, you're launching a brand or a label or something like that. That's your baby, right? And this is also parenting. This could be your actual physical baby too. So perhaps you'll take parenting more seriously uh, or you'll be looking at it from a more strategic viewpoint, but you will certainly be looking at your creative endeavors from a strategic viewpoint and in a more serious way and in a more structured way. It's very exciting. Right? You can achieve a lot with this. Um, your creative and parental decision making will go up a level. Yeah, it's really fantastic. So now 10th aspect on 8th house may bring other people into focus. So this is in-laws. This is resources from others. You may re materialize resources from others. Okay, Other people's money. You might materialize that. That might come in for you. That's fantastic. Travel in relation to family is also possible at this time. So Pisces Moon. It's a fantastic 2.5 years for you and I really hope you can capitalize on all that Saturn is going to be actively looking to give you. 
And to all viewers, if anyone's stuck through and watched all of these, <laughs> I'm amazed. <laughs> but um, what I want to say is thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And I look forward to seeing you next time.